Welcome back. If you just joined us, you're watching Diplomatic Channel, and I am Amarachi Ubani. So here are the other stories that we're monitoring on Diplomatic Channel. <laughs> There is still no word on the authenticity of a video released online in which Boko Haram leader Abu Bakr Shakao claims the group has created an Islamic caliphate in Goza, Brno State. In the video, the military engages the sect members in a gun battle, but Shakao is seen declaring that the group has taken over the town and made it a part of a caliphate, making Goza no longer a part of the country. The Nigerian military has debunked their claim, saying no one can curve out any part of this entity called Nigeria. African countries need to do more to curb the spread of the Ebola virus disease, it seems. The DR Congo on Sunday announced its first cases after two of eight cases tested positive for the virus. The country's health minister, Felix Numbi, said one of the two cases that tested positive was from the Sudanese strain of the disease, while the other was a mixture between the Sudanese and the Zaire strain, the most lethal of the variety. U.S. journalist Theo Curtis, who was kidnapped in Syria since 2012, has been released. Qatar, believed to have been behind negotiations for his release, said Curtis had been handed over to a representative of the United Nations in Syria. The release happened just days after the Islamic State militant group fighting in Iraq and Syria released a video showing another U.S. journalist being beheaded. Speaking of which, the Iranian Foreign Minister Javad Zarif is in Iraq to discuss the security crisis there, an effort to eliminate the Islamic State. He met with outgoing Iraqi Prime Minister Nouri al-Maliki and his successor Haider al-Badi Zarif. He urged that regional and international intervention is needed to destroy the Islamic State. We are uh, cooperating and working with uh, various, uh, with the Iraqi government and with, with the Kurdish government in order to repel uh, this very serious, uh, atrocious group uh, uh, that is uh, threatening not only uh, Iraqi Kurds and Shia and Sunnah, but also the entire Iraqi society and the entire region, and in fact the international community as a whole. And we believe it requires a concerted effort by the international community in order to deal with this group whose character is now very clear to everybody. Now this same character which has brought chaos to Syria is now uh, re wreaking havoc in, in Iraq and committing acts of uh, horrendous genocide. Uh, and uh, crimes against humanity needs to be tackled by the international community and by every country in the region. The Islamic State militants in Iraq are believed to have been defeated over the weekend while they tried to take over a major oil refinery in the country. The Baidu refinery north of the country has been the site of several battles between Iraqi forces and militants since the offensive began. Uh, just a few days ago, the United States said the militants were more dangerous to America than anything else and posed a threat to every interest of the United States in Iraq or elsewhere. U.S. Defense Secretary Chuck Hagel was talking to journalists last week and he said the IS militants were as sophisticated and well-funded as any group the U.S. has ever seen. While chairman of the U.S. Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Martin Dempsey, said the group could pose a direct threat to the West. I doubt if there were many people that uh, uh, would have thought there was much of, of a threat the day before 9-11. Uh, now, that happened a few years ago. This, this country is f far better prepared today in every way for this. Uh, but uh, terrorism is not new to the world. Uh, the sophistication of terrorism and ideology that the general was talking about, married now with resources now, presents a whole new dynamic and, and a new, new paradigm of threats to this country. The sophistication, technology, money, resources, all of that is different. ISIL is as sophisticated and well-funded as any uh, group that we have seen. Uh, they're, they're beyond just a terrorist group. They marry ideology, 
a sophistication of, of strategic and uh, tactical military prowess. They are tremendously well funded. Oh, this is beyond anything that, that we've seen. So we must pre prepare for, for everything. And uh, the only way you do that is you take a cold, steely, hard look at it and, and, and get ready. Um, longer term, it's about ISIL's vision which includes, I actually call ISIL, you know, here we go, right, ISIS, I-S-I-S, because it's easier for me to remember that their long-term vision is the Islamic State of Iraq and al-Sham. And al-Sham includes Lebanon, the current state of Israel, Jordan, S Iraq, Syria, and Kuwait. If they were to achieve that vision, it would fundamentally alter the face of the Middle East and create uh, uh, a security environment that would certainly threaten us in many ways. Well, this came after the U.S. journalist James Foley was murdered on camera by an IS militant whom the U.S. and the U.K. say they're now close to identifying. The U.S. is now considering taking the fight against the militants into Syria. Professor Edwin Smith is an expert on international peacekeeping, foreign policy and war powers. Right now, he's with the University of Southern California. He gives us an insight to what is really going on in Iraq and why we should all be concerned. Uh, it is, I've watched this evolution since the beginning of the war. In fact, I remember hearing uh, at uh, several conferences uh, Army generals saying that uh, going into Iraq was a very bad idea. That was in 2003. Uh, we've been involved in uh, problems in Iraq for so long now that we are, in a sense, invested in Iraq. Um, People do not, American people do not want to send ground troops, large-scale ground forces into Iraq, um, but the kind of um, uh, group that is taking over the center of Iraq uh, and uh, eastern Syria is far worse than we were ever dealing with in terms of al-Qaeda uh, for a number of different reasons. So that it's very hard not to react, not to respond. I think the airstrikes that are underway are attempting to try to minimize the most dangerous capabilities uh, of uh, the Islamic State at this point. But it is going to be a problem for a very long time, I think. I've read some of your articles online. In one of them, you said the violence in Iraq is exacerbated by complex, contradictory cross-currents in the region involving Saudi Arabia, yeah. Iran, Turkey, uh, Jordan, and Lebanon yeah. um, among all participants. Yeah. But if that's the case, uh, what do Western countries such as the U.S. and U.K. have at stake in the crisis? Uh, what they have at stake in the crisis at this point, the most pressing issue that is being discussed on uh, in the media in the U.S. is the fact that there are uh, over a th well over a thousand Westerners, people with Western passports, who are in uh, who are fighting with the Islamic State now, those people could get into Europe and into the United States without visas. There would be no approvals required for them. They would simply go buy a ticket, get on the plane, and they could be in the United States. We could wind up with uh, there are at least a hundred Americans there now we could wind up with a hundred individuals who, if they were truly committed, could wreak havoc, could cause all kinds of damage. Um, car bombs, um, attacks on weak infrastructure locations like uh, power plants. Uh, all of our power plants are connected by uh, computers. All of our uh, air traffic systems uh, our, our rail traffic system. Individuals with knowledge can cause huge amounts of damage. Uh, and we are afraid that there could be at least 100 and maybe, depending upon the European visas, uh, maybe up to 1,000 people who could come into the United States and cause all sorts of damage. Uh, it, it's already happened over Europe. Uh, small things have happened uh, uh, over Europe. Small, that is... Uh, a small number of killed, but there have been several of these events happening as people came from the Islamic State into Europe. So uh, there is that danger. 
Professor, is, is the rest of the world in danger because of what's going on in Iraq? I mean, the IS militants uh, seem to be giving the Iraqi government a real run for their money. Should the rest of the world really be concerned, apart from Arab countries and Western countries who are afraid of uh, the, the backlash that will come out of this? Should the rest of the world be concerned? The ideology of the Islamic State is the core ideology that is desired, is uh, pursued by uh, people like al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula, uh, the uh, Al Qaeda in the Maghreb, uh, the, 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 the those who are Al Qaeda connected in Mali. Uh, we don't know how close Boko Haram is to Al Qaeda, but there are indications of connections. There are many, many connections between Somalia and um, uh, uh, Al Qaeda and the Islamic State and. Given that we've just recently decreased the kinds of insurgencies in Indonesia and the Philippines, uh, these insurgencies could arise back again. So this could this could spread very much like wildfire uh, among countries that have insurgents. Those would be the target countries and uh, for recruiting people and any um, well. Uh, Western Western education is is haram, which is the the idea of Boko Haram, uh, attacking Western education, attacking Western culture, uh, is a problem that they uh, is something they want to do. Uh, there is a risk. There is risk outside of Arabia, for sure. Professor, how do you attack an ideology? How do you curb it? I frankly do not know the answer to that question. I do not know that it's possible. The only successful counter to an ideology is a more attractive ideology. That to the extent, take Iraq as as an example. Uh, To the extent you could have a unifying government that is allows Sunnis and Shia and Kurds to, uh, in a government, in a society, that's the sort of thing that uh, would be the answer. For, for many years, Lebanon was a much more uh, cooperative uh, uh, country, um, and that fell apart. Interestingly, under Saddam Hussein, there was very little distinction to be had between Shia and Sunni, uh, uh, as far as the people in Baghdad, uh, there were lots of people outside of Baghdad who saw Saddam Hussein differently. But uh, it, to the extent that you can find a uh, multi-party culture that can function, that's the best answer to the ideology. But the, uh, obviously, we're talking very, very long-term answers not near-term answers, not easy off-the-shelf, solve-the-problem-quickly kind of answers. And that's the program this week. Once again, you can leave your comments and thoughts on any of the addresses coming up right now. I am Amarachi Bunny. Thanks for watching.